Hey, this is Not Sir, and this is the user replay of the week. Admiral Jellico is in the Tier 9 American Cruiser Baltimore on the map Neighbors. If you have a replay you would like to submit, please submit it to notserreplay at gmail.com. Please have the replay file, in score screenshots, one to two sentence summary, and please include the ship name in the title of the email. If you can't produce an amazing game, maybe you've got a really crazy moment that occurred to you. All you have to do for that is share the timestamp for when it occurs in the replay. And I really appreciate all the support, all the enthusiasm. Please, please, please make sure that the replay file is also submitted with the email. I've run across too many emails where you've got me the screenshots, you've described the game, and there's no replay file. So what am I supposed to do with that? Right? This is obviously entertainment. I need to be able to record it and share it with everyone through commentary. Speaking of commentary, Jellico is apparently making a move towards C. Two friendly destroyers have already gone. This is a aircraft carrier game. There's one per side, so you need to consider that a AA focused ship like an American cruiser or an American battleship will be protected more so than other classes of ships like the Japanese or the Soviet cruisers. The friendly is going against the enemy destroyer and they are trading back and forth. They're about the same health. Jellico could easily help push this in their favor. 2K is going to start it out. Friendly torpedoes are in the water, and the enemy destroyer loses his propulsion. However, he's he's got to have last stand. I don't know a destroyer that doesn't have last stand. It's just so good. You're taking so much damage, and yeah, he's just not dropping off. But it looks like a friendly, someone in the background, is also firing on the enemy destroyer. And Jellico's last salvo hit really close to the target. It was able to incapacitate something through the explosion of the HE, but it was not able to do damage to it. The friendly aircraft carrier is overhead, dropping bombs. It looks like the enemy destroyer might be burning a little bit. If the friendly Mayhan ends up going around the island, killing him, that'll be great for his team. Jellico is taking a little bit of damage, not too much. He's pretty, he's very, very, very narrow compared to the enemy trying to fire on them. And yes, I think this is the last moments for the enemy destroyer, and he's taken out by Samuel, who should try to stay and capture C, but he actually leaves the point. The C point was just about to capture. Unfortunately, they've got to go through it all over again, and they might actually take damage. They might be killed. He can't really pass up that. Got to pay attention. I make that mistake, too. I remember an Anshan video where I just sailed a little bit too far out. We make these mistakes. It's important that we don't make the same mistake though, and I don't think they're going to try and sail through sea again. Jellico is still continuing to fire on the enemy cruisers that are trying to set up just outside of sea. And honestly, they're being a little bit too passive for my taste. If you know there are destroyers, you should try and use your skills in a cruiser to your advantage. Cruisers are designed to fight destroyers. There shouldn't be a situation where you're at a disadvantage, and if you realize, hey, that's the only enemy ships there, you should try and take advantage of it. But there are a couple friendly ships, a couple. There are three battleships and one cruiser for Jellico that are moving over to the eastern side of the map. And nobody has captured A, nobody has captured B. They lose a friendly aircraft carrier, and I think the friendly aircraft carrier was a little bit too close to the enemy. You notice where he died. He's almost the farthest forward ship on the southwest side of the map. That's just way too close. And someone's like, we don't take A. What can you do? There's no destroyer there. You're not going to take in front of battleships. Cruisers just don't have that kind of concealment. This enemy Ibuki might show himself and Jellico was setting up. Doesn't look like it. Jellico really should capture B. There's an island in the way and so far no enemy has shown any interest in B whatsoever. If they capture B and C, 
Then they can play defensively, force the enemy to come to them. Jellico's already lost three friendly ships on his team. Two on the southwest side of the map. And one is an aircraft carrier, which is just not acceptable. Ah, the enemy Ibuki is in the area. And he is spotted. <laughs> Jellico. Maybe he just peered through the island. I don't know. Oh, no, no, no. It's the enemy Run, who's just forward of his ship. And that enemy Ibuki is preventing his capture. So right now, it's completely worthless to capture the base. He should try and focus on possibly taking out this enemy German cruiser. And he's got HE loaded. The American cruisers are great forward pushing. Most of their guns are forward facing. And if this German cruiser is willing, Rune, are you really going to show your side? Come on, show your beautiful side to Jellico so he can penetrate with his 203 AP rounds. 3200 ain't bad. No fire. He already set one fire. I think he probably put it out. If he can get another fire, that'd be great. The enemy aircraft carrier, he sent his aircraft. He is going to learn what happens when you send aircraft against a US cruiser. He's got great range. He might actually have the range increase module. I'm not 100%, but there is no way. Oh man, that was great. That was great. There was no way the aircraft were gonna get anywhere close to his ship. He took eight of them out and he destroyed the enemy rune. A perfect broadside. Couldn't have been better. And he unloads 2000 points worth of damage on the enemy Kagero, who has captured C, of course. That's just how it works. Enemy torpedoes, okay. Well, he overshot just a little bit. And Jellicoe doesn't really have to worry about it at all. I don't even think he had his speed dropped that much. I think it was just dumb luck. Or, you know, no, it's not luck. But it was convenient that the enemy missed so far. He, he probably felt like... The Baltimore's just going to keep on going. He's not going to sail at all. He's not going to try and maneuver. And it ends up that Jellico is exactly that. Maneuvering his ship. And he's, he's not doing too bad. But don't let this guy get away, Jellico. We know what happens to destroyers, right? They deserve to die and suffer. And I'm a destroyer main. I love destroyers, but they are just so important to the game's success. If he takes this out... There's not going to be anyone else that can do their sneaky crap. And he hits a big shot, 2,500. He's also, by the way, decapping C point. Still, no one has captured B. I don't know where the Ibuki went, but the Ibuki is no longer at B. Oh, man, Jellico, we can't let this guy get away. If you could just stay on him just a little bit longer, you'll take him out. Enemy Ibuki, enemy North Carolina on the northeast side of the map are going up against, well, they were going up against a friendly ship that is now defeated. So Jellico is at a disadvantage. However, he is benefiting from the smoke that the destroyer used. How many times does a destroyer drop his smoke and he bails out and it's useful to the enemy? He just can't do that. But, oh man, he doesn't have last stand. He should totally be out of here. And he pays for not taking last stand. You know what? Torpedo rearm. It's just so good for Japanese destroyers. Well, you know what else is really good for destroyers? Last stand. And he would not have died if he had last stand. Jellico captures C. And he can go right back to B. It's like he never even left it. Still, nobody on his team have tried to capture B. And maybe Jellico, because he's a little bit farther forward, he doesn't have to deal with the ships in the south can actually capture it. Last little bit of fire from the enemy. Oh, 0.5.8. Public test server was announced. New ribbons. A whole lot of ribbons. I'm going to obviously cover that in great detail, but the ribbon system is getting an overhaul. Way more information to the player about the success of the ship in the match. And things that never had ribbons before will get ribbons now, like a ricochet or secondary batteries making contact with the enemy ship. That sort of thing, that's very useful in more ways than one. We're also getting nationalistic audio, which is great. My Russian, German, Japanese, you know, Polish, if it is, I, I really doubt they're gonna make Polish audio for a single ship, but you never know, they could do it. 
Same with the Chinese. I'm going to assume there's not going to be a Chinese local... Well, it might be. You know what? I don't know anything. I'm just really excited to see how it works out. Jellico is engaging the enemy Ibuki at fairly long range. And I think that's the Ibuki that tried to capture B, and he slunk away. Like the conniving, sinister, evil ship he is. And he's able to do okay damage. Set a fire on Jellico. Jellico puts it out. He probably figured, ah, he's going to go behind the island. This is a perfect opportunity to use damage control, put out the fire, and have it up for the next engagement. The other enemy, Ibuki, is coming into range. He's just behind an island, of course, and Jellico is ready. He decides, let's go AP. Probably felt like the enemy's going to be showing a perfect broadside, or very nearly, and I need that first strike to really maximize the potential damage. Cruisers should always try to do this. Swap to the best ammo for the scenario. The reload is pretty fair. And he lets it out at the waterline. And it looks like it might be pretty good. Eh, he's got a little bit of an angling. 43, it could have been better. If he would have just maintained a more clean broadside. He, he, nothing Jellico could do, obviously. But he continues to fire. 59, okay, okay. Come on, Jellico, take this guy out. He's showing a broadside. He's sluggish. Yeah, good. He compensated. He brought it in and he took the target out. He gets a citadel and that is how it was written. The Ibuki shall die at eight minutes into the match on neighbor. The enemy North Carolina, he's pretty healthy and he's also engaging Jellico and Jellico got a little lucky there. He got really lucky there. Wow, Jellico. You should have taken more damage than you did right there. But that's okay. Part of the reason why a battleship is a little bit frustrating at times is the RNG factor of the guns. It's much more pronounced than other ships in the game, like cruisers or destroyers. And he's sort of backing up. He has to fight four enemy ships. I don't blame him. He really doesn't have a good opportunity. And he's showing a perfect broadside. So Jellico can equip AP and try and knock him out just like that. He's firing at the waterline. I don't know if he will get a Citadel, but he should do good damage. 5k, that, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. He is sort of moving outside of a perfect broadside, though, as he rotates around the ship. And he is the target of opportunity for the enemy. Uh, 8300. Uh, that could have been worse. It could have been better. It's pretty mediocre about the <laughs> amount of damage he was able to sustain. And the battleship, of course. He's got a angle against Jellico. Deny the kill, deny the AP. Jellico switches to HE. And he's able to get just enough from the last salvo. Take out the enemy North Carolina. The Ibuki is back. He's like, don't you dare take B from me. How dare you? Well, Jellico, just put in the HE. He has HE loaded. Which, uh, it, it might be ideal right now. The Ibuki could move into a broadside. No, actually, the Ibuki is going bow on. What is with everyone firing at Jellico? Why aren't these battleships in any contact with the enemies? They seem to always be hidden from view. Oh, come on, Jellico. We need to get this guy dead. The game is running out of time. The enemy already has 700 and 21 points. His team, one of the battleships, is capturing C, which is good. The Ibuki appears to be hiding behind the island, which is exactly what he needs to do. He should complete the capture and rejoin his teammates that are on the south side of the map, pushing into Jellico's team. The enemy aircraft care, he's considering it. Ooh, that was a battleship fire. And it missed barely, and Jellico wasn't aware at all, so he got lucky. And yes, you might say, oh, it was a hard shot, hard shot. I've had the exact same scenario where I brought, oh, look at the amount of damage he's doing. He's just taking out all the aircraft. Twelve enemy aircraft shot down. I think that was every single aircraft that was within effective range. I think he got the fighter, the torpedo, and the dive bomber, all with that. And, of course, that, that's the U.S. cruiser line. Defensive fire, AA protection, it's it's scary. The Ibuki, 
Oh, ooh, a enemy cruiser that was right next to the Ibuki died suddenly. The Ibuki, he's rotating his guns. This is the weakness of the Japanese cruiser. Jellico fires AP at the waterline, and he gets, uh, you know, 12,000 points of damage. And Confederate, not bad. But it's not going to get any easier. Yep, he swaps right to HE. Good decision, good decision, because it's just really hard. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Just one salvo should take this guy out. I think he got assist from my friend, because I think he only did 2,000. But there was, what, 6k left on the target? So someone got, like... 3k more aircraft he takes them out good kraken unleashed as well his aa is able to protect him and this is just too easy enemy aircraft carrier is suicidal maybe he feels like no why why are you taking out every opportunity i have to do damage to you and he's going to take a ton of damage being a japanese cruiser he's fast but He's not fast enough. You just need to make sure that he moves about the speed of a cruiser and compensate. Uh, AP, probably not an ideal shot there, but he didn't expect him to reorient. You know, AP is great. You really should fire AP against a aircraft carrier when given his broadside. But if you ever hit the top of the deck or the sides at just the right angle, it's going to do almost nothing. And that is, of course, very frustrating. And, of course, Jellico. Hey, let's go AP. Now that he's angling against me, probably not going to be as effective, but you never know. If he had AP for that last salvo, he would have done a lot of... Yeah, <laughs> I know how this is. I think everyone watching knows how this goes. You see the perfect opportunity for AP. You had HE loaded. You switched to AP going, I'm going to kill this guy. And then he gets into another angle that is not advantageous for you. And I think Jellico is just like, you know what? Friendlies can take that guy. Let's get the enemy at Nagato as he's slunking away to a point. And I think this is a good shot. I think he only needed a couple rounds. Yes, he takes him out. Good. The sixth kill for Jellico. They're still down. The enemy still has two bases to their one, but there's two minutes left and only two enemies left. So they can still do this. I don't know where the enemy cruiser is. His last known position was the southwest side of the map, but that might have been a while ago. Oh, you see that shell fire? Probably behind an island. He's getting scouting information from the Colorado. He doesn't need to reveal his position. He's probably pretty low. Most players who refuse to show themselves are unhealthy. They would like to manipulate the line of sight, and the vision game as long as possible to stay it healthy. And Jellico, I think Jellico is like, let's commit to capturing the base, and then we will go after the enemy. If he fires his guns, he will be revealed, and possibly the enemy cruiser could engage him. But he is detected by aircraft either way, so he's probably going, ah, let's go. He had the range. It's just the second you saw the detection on his screen, he ended up just going for it. They've captured B, so they have a two to one advantage. They're slowly getting close to the enemy, but there's not enough time. There's a minute left in this match. They've got to make something happen. They need to get a kill. I don't know what, find the enemy cruiser. They've got to do something to give them a chance to win. They're about uh, 95 points behind and gaining slowly, very slowly. Jellico always looking over to his starboard side to just make sure and see if the enemy is anywhere close. But he's not showing himself. He doesn't want to. He, he, he's low. That's what it tells me. 100% the enemy cruiser is low. Oh. Colorado does a little bit of damage. Colorado has 11,000 points left on his ship. Oh, good shot. A friendly battleship, I think, did 6k. 20 seconds left. Jellico lets out one more salvo. Uh, this could be it. Oh, he missed. He missed. 1,600. 10 seconds left in the match. Jellico lets out one last salvo. He won't be able to let out another one. It's all on these shells. They're going down. Everyone's tense. Oh, my God. And it's... He did it. Jellico was able to kill the target. And in doing so, they won the game. Confederate Kraken Unleashed. Seven kills. Four citadels three base captures, over 117,000 points of damage, 
600,000 credits earned. Just a fantastic game, Jellico. Really appreciate you sharing it with us. Jellico did 4,463 base XP. Probably 1,500 of that is just in objective play between defending bases and capturing bases, but still a fantastic showing, Jellico. And the damage done, 45 in HE, 57 in AP with 14,000 in fire. So it's pretty evenly spread. That's, that's sort of how a U.S. cruiser should be played. You don't really have a superior ammo type, so to say. You, you go with what works in the scenario. And sometimes AP is great for broadside. Sometimes HE is great for straight on targets that need to be burning. So, Jellico, I really appreciate it. It's a fantastic game. Another nail-biter. I can't believe I've never seen a game end like that. Hopefully this was exciting for you all. Hopefully you have a fantastic day, and I'll catch you next time.